tonight's job is to hopefully get this cover off here and expose the cam belt. It does mean removing this pulley down here. That requires removing the road wheel and jacking it up. That's that out of the way. I've marked the crank pulley and uh, there is a mark also on the timing belt case uh, which corresponds with it. So we're lined up up here and we're lined up down there and I expect there to be a mark on the um, camshaft drive as well which runs through here. Not looking promising. So it's going to be a fun one. So I've freed one the old fashioned way. I don't know if we'll get away with the rest of them. Ooh, three down. There's always going to be that one. Always be that one. Improper. <laughs> Is this the one? Oh, ah, gotcha. One crank pulley. Must remember to put the belts on, and the bigger one of the two goes at the back. And it might even be worth changing them. Right, what have we got? Is this, oh, this is loose as well. Right, both pulleys are indexed using a pin just on the crank pulley. Well, that, does that come off? Well, yeah, it does. But that pin, interestingly, almost looks like it's being sheared. But I guess it just indexes where the, where the pulleys go. So that's okay. That's good. It doesn't actually drive it. The underside view, um, it looks like we've got a bolt here, which is why we have to set the pulleys off and also obviously to allow the belt to come off. Um, what else have we got? Oh, there's a nut bolt here. There's our mark there, which is where we line the, the pulleys up. Is there a mark on here at all? It doesn't look to be, so it's all done via the pulleys. Okay, and then we'll probably have a few more nuts and bolts off a bit higher to take off and then hopefully we can get this this guard off. Yep, there we go. Just needed a wiggle. Come on. Alright, give that a good clean before it goes back on. Slow going tonight. Next door's kicking off again. Slow going tonight, but um, we've made some progress. Uh, we've got our timing marks on the uh, cam shaft pulley. I've taken apart the uh, what the hell is that? Uh, distributor drive pulley. That's what that is. Um, and I've marked that. There was no obvious. There's a marking on the pulley here that says OT, which actually makes me think that this is the same type of pulley that they use on the cam shaft, and they've just used the same part. But I've marked the OT to the metal tin work at the back which will come off but will go back on in the same place and uh, I've marked the pulley which is no longer on there um, and as long as we don't move the crank or even if we do we've got the pulley marked so that's indexed so that's not an issue I think this is the cylinder head temperature sensor and then there's these two I think one is the fan um, sensor and I have no idea how those clips come apart so I'm going to have a think about that. Okay so I think they just wiggle off. I think. <laughs> Could be wrong. There we go. They're colour coordinated. Lovely. I almost missed one. There's one under here as well. I have no idea what all three of those sensors do. I'll have to look that up at some point. Not that it really matters. This part, which is the back of the cam belt cover, is broken and I already have a replacement for that. 
Cam belt tensioner loosened, single nut on here, cam belt slid off, and now we can remove the tensioner. Lovely. Got a replacement for that. Right, a couple of notes. Uh, this one has the earth for the carburetor and this one has an earth strap for the main body. One camshaft. I need to take this tin off now which um, is bolted to both the cylinder head and to the block. So I think it's one, two, three, 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 and one I've already done which is the T-bolt I broke. I think, I'm hoping that's it. He says confidently. <laughs> There's always one nut that holds you up. What's going on there? Okay, I need to look it. I need to look into that. Bit of a wiggle and it came out. Uh, as a note, this uh, sprocket got a bit of a jiggle when it was coming out. So I must make sure that that goes back in the right place as per the mark we put on that tin we just removed. Right, I think all the ancillaries and cables are detached from the cylinder head. Um, I'm going to give it one last check round uh, just to make sure nothing is still attached to it. Um, and then I think it's time to undo the uh, undo the cylinder head bolts. Um, we have got ten of them. Uh, they're all down in those little pits there, which is starting to concern me because I want to make sure that I've got a long enough uh, tool <laughs> for half an hour. I want to make sure that I've got a uh, long enough um, reach to get in there. And I'm not going to foul up on anything. They're splined head bolts, and I have purchased specially a splined set and I think it's an M10 but we'll find out in a minute. Right it's an M12 not an M10 splined socket and there's a sequence to undoing this which is the reverse of tightening them and the tightening sequence is in here somewhere 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 Somewhere. 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 There we go. At last. Right, so the tightening sequence is that. So we've got to do it in reverse. So 10, 9, 8, 7, etc, etc. Right, I'm going to follow that. It's a half turn, according to the manual on each one, but I think I'll start with quarters and just work my way until they become loose, uh, just to um, release the tension slowly on them, rather than uh, going f hell for leather on it. Right, quarter turn. God, bloody hell. That's tight. Okay, wasn't expecting that. Okay, let's try again. I wonder if I need a longer breaker bar on this. <laughs> oh, blimey. Okay, regroup. Okay, take two. a little at a time. Number 10. Number 
number nine. That's a bit easier, that one. Number eight. Right, I'm going to go around and break them completely. Okay, they've all broken loose, so I'm just going to whiz the bolt out now. That's an oily. I think I need a bag for those. They are being replaced, but I don't want to get oil everywhere. Uh, I think the cylinder head's already loose because it kind of moved on the last bolt. Yeah, we've got a bit of rocking movement there. I don't think it's going to put up a fight coming up, but you never know with these things. Um, and I'm on my own, so I don't quite know what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to try and lift that out on my own, or whether I'm going to call for backup on this. Right, I'm going for it. Let's just hope it's not caught up on anything, because I don't want to have to put it back down and scratch it up. It's need a good hold on it as well. Where's the weight balance and distribution going to be? Ready? Don't get caught on anything. One, two, three. Out you come. Oh, you bugger, come on. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Okay, one cylinder head gasket. And one set of pistons. That last piston's very clean. Which usually means there might have been a fluid leak into it, but it's hard to tell. Yes, and there's the starter motor. I would not want to change that. That is a that is a shit place to hide a starter motor. How the hell do you get at that? Go on the side, I suppose. But even so, what a bastard that is. Anyway, I sidetracked myself. So yeah, one very grotty, manky looking cylinder head gasket now I think I'm going to try and peel it away towards the back of the engine because there is some crud and stuff here um, and dirt and muck and it could just be welded on there so tightly that it doesn't come off but we'll see it's a bit of movement I hate it when the material welds itself oh good so those are pegs at the back where the crud's accumulated Let's see if we can just gently, without flicking the crap in there. There we go. One cylinder head gasket. One cylinder head. Phase one. I'm not looking forward to um, getting these off. That that's going to be a job. So there we go, that'll need cleaning up, but at least there's not gasket material welded to it. Um, it's just dirty and greasy and oily. I'm trying to work out where the oil way that was leaking was. I think it's this here, I think, sorry you're not seeing it. I think this is the leaking oil way because this is where the oil is accumulated. Actually that's coolant, but um, so I think it comes up here to the cylinder head and when the gasket goes, it goes here and just seeps out. Um, yeah, nice. Well, that's another phase gone. I might get a piece of cardboard and just put it over the top to keep the uh, keep any moisture out as best as possible. And I might, in fact, I am going to give it a spritz with some uh, with some oil just to keep the bores from rusting. <laughs> 